I am now convinced that habit trackers are the new meta of self-improvement. Let me explain. What does meta mean? If you're a gamer, you kind of know this term. Meta means most effective tactic, most effective tactic available. So I've been doing habit trackers for a little bit less than six months now. So I've made six of them so far. And I used to track habits on my computer, on my phone, but it just, it would never work. I used to have like an app on my phone. I had to go through the app to like kind of click it off, but it never worked. So the reason why I say habit trackers are the new meta is because of many reasons. Number one, they're, it builds awareness. Number two, you are in control of your choices and your habits and therefore your life. And number three is going to be the compound effect. Before I get into how habit trackers are even good, at the end, I'm going to show you how to actually build a habit tracker of your own so you can get on that path to creating the life that you want to create. You see, when I first started building my habit tracker, I it was just me trying to just see where I was at, right? See what I was doing every single day and how can I can go further from that. I was trying to get like a baseline, an understanding of my baseline of where I was at. So I'll show you like my first one. Like look at look at all that red. It's it's crazy. And like of course you're not gonna get all green when you first start off. I, I didn't expect that. I didn't have that expectation of myself. So when I first saw that, I was like, damn, like I got a lot of work to do. So after I saw that, right, I had this awareness in the back of my mind. I was like, okay, like I'm like this right now, the next month, how can I do better? In what ways can I do better? Right? It, from the looks of my first, my first habit tracker, I, I didn't wake up early a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of the 31 days, I only woke up early eight days out of the 31 days of that month. It was in August. And even like I wrote like notes on the side here. I said, been staying up past 2 a.m. every night. And or 13 hour shift today failed. Like I would like write notes to, like on the side of my habit tracker to like let myself know like, okay, the reason we got red here is because of this. It was like, I was almost like making up an excuse. But the awareness I've built over time, like building one every single month, like I, I'm kind of excited for it, right? Now at the beginning of each month, I'm like, okay, how can I get all green this month? How can I make sure I get all my habits done this month? It's kind of like almost like a game at this point now. Like instead of having posters all around my all my, my room, I just have habit trackers just haunting me, like looking at me every single second. So the next reason why habit trackers are so effective is because you are pretty much in control of where you end up in your life. So, like, so from, from the looks of it, right, the habits that you want to instill lead towards a goal that you want or have in mind, or it leads towards something that you want or desire. So, let's say, so you want better mental health, right? So, in order to get better mental health, what do you have to do? You have to be more mindful, you have to love yourself more, you have to look at life from a different angle you to kind of shift your mind totally so with that right you can be like okay i want to journal every single day my thoughts morning and night or you can be like okay i want to meditate for 10 minutes every single day or i want to go for a walk every single day so you would have these habits at the top of your habit tracker and what you would do is you just be like okay i'm gonna do this stuff every single day to my best of my ability right and then yeah, by the end of the month, I hopefully have better mental health, right? What you're pretty much focused on is the input, not the output, because everyone's so focused on the outcome, the the results. No one's focused on the input, is which what is that is really what you should be focused on, because you reap what you sow. So it's not about the reaping; it's about sowing. It's about just putting in the work, and regardless of the results, if you just focus on putting in the work, you'll know what you'll get. So, like, I'll give you another example, right? I put reading down as one of my habits, right? So, what that would mean is if I, if I read every single day for a month, I would probably either read, like, two, two or three books a month. And I know that I'll do that because of my habit, like, seeing where I was at, my habit tracker. See, why it's so much better to have it on a piece of paper than on, like, a computer or electronic because it kind of brings, like... Cause, being in front of electronics like all the time like worrying about like your habits like it kind of it's kind of suffocating what i would do what i used to do is like every single morning I'd, I'd open like a notion template and i would just like write down what i would do for the day like in like as like a task list 
and I have like eight different things or like I'd have different things every single day. And then from the yesterday, I wouldn't know what I would did, did yesterday. So it's like, it really kind of, it keeps you accountable too, because you have this on your wall. Maybe you have like a friend or a sibling or a parent that comes in and sees that on your wall. And so you like have to get green now because you don't really, you know what I mean? It keeps you accountable, this thing. It's like an accountability partner. The next reason why a habit tracker is so effective is because of the compound effect. Let's really think about it. What is the compound effect? The compound effect is you doing the same things every single day for a long period of time will have compounding results. The results seem invisible at first, but in six months, one year, or even a couple of years from now, the results will show. Let me give you an example. So there's two guys, they work the same job, right? They have the same type of lifestyle, but the one guy after work, he drives through to McDonald's, right? And he grabs a milkshake. Every single day, there's 200 calorie. I don't know how many calories it is, but it's probably like a little bit less than that. This 200 calorie milkshake, every single day he drinks it after going home from work, right? It's a little treat, it's nothing really crazy. The second guy, what he does is when he commutes to work and when he drives home from work, he listens to a podcast, an educational podcast. In one year, right? In one year from then, like you won't see any results. Like they're, they're exactly the same still. But in three years time, guess what happens to the one guy who went through McDonald's? He's now fat as shit because that extra calories every single day builds up over time. It might not look like it in one year, but in two to three years, it kind of exploded, right? And then the next guy, the guy who listened to podcasts every single day, he got promoted, not in one year, not in two years, but in three years from then, from those compounding results, they might seem invisible at first, but over time, you can see the results they show. He got promoted in his business. He maybe even started his own business. Maybe he started reading books, right? He started becoming a more intelligent person. Therefore, he got promoted. So like, you can apply this to anything in life. If you want better mental health, journal every day, meditate every day, go for a walk every day. If you want to be a more loving person, go and hug your family member every single day. Put it on your habit tracker. If you want to stop going on social media, write on your habit tracker, okay, my screen time is going to be less than three hours or two hours per day. Like, and then putting it on a piece of paper leaves you accountable because then you can put it on your wall. You can put it on somewhere where you can see it every single day. Therefore, you won't Therefore, you won't be not aware of it. The next reason why it's so effective is because, and honestly, it's fun, right? At the beginning of each month now, I'm like actually kind of excited to make my new habit tracker. Like I always try to keep like the same habits every single month. Maybe I add a few, maybe I add one or I subtract one or whatever, but it, it kind of is really fun. Like I, it's like I'm... Like I can see results and we love to see results. We love to see progress. So when I look at this, like this piece of paper and all the pieces of papers that I've been going through the past couple of months, I really see results. I see change and it kind of, it motivates me. It makes me feel proud of myself. You know what I mean? I've been consistent with the kind of consistent with some habits and some not habits. And, and now I just, I just cannot wait to make my habit tracker at the beginning of each month. Like I genuinely feel like I'm leveling up and you can feel like that too. I always used to like want to see results when I used to make a task list like on my phone or my computer. It was never like enough. Like I would see it and then the next day I'd just get erased, right? I would just get kind of discouraged because like the next day, maybe I get like, I tick off two instead of the, the day previous, I'd knock off like five. But I wouldn't see the day before, I'd only see the day now, which in a sense, like you'd be like, oh, only worry about today. Don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow, which is fair. But this, it helps. It motivates me. It keeps me proud of myself. It makes me feel like fulfilled, right? It helps me know that I'm on the right track. And a lot of people, they don't have that type of feeling. They, they want to feel like they're on track. So this habit tracker really allows you to, to feel that about yourself. How to actually build a habit tracker is a different story because like you could see like, because you don't have to do it exactly how I do it. Because how I do it right now is I put my habits at the top, right? I make this piece of paper. I, I outline it with like a dark marker or a dark pen. So what I do is on the side here, I put the days going down. Like you can get try to get some line paper. It really helps. But you can start going down, counting all the way down to the days of the month on the side. And then you put your habits at the top over here. And then as you're, and then as time goes on, right? Day one, this is day one. Day one, you look at it, you're like, okay, um, that day I got three right out of out of six. 
but don't get like don't be so mad at yourself when you just get red like a lot because it's gonna happen like you gotta realize especially if you're a beginner like you're gonna get red a lot like to be honest my first my first month of the habit tracker was terrible <laughs> like look it, it's not terrible right but i could have done way better there was days where i just didn't do anything like i didn't do any habits at all so let the first couple months be like a way for you to understand where you're at and create a good baseline don't be so worried about not getting the habits done because just worry about marking it off and making a habit of marking it off and seeing where you're at. So when you go to build this thing, right? I'll show you again, right? Habits at the top, numbers at down at the bottom. And then I wrote numbers on the side here. Like for example, if I got if I got three green, I'd write three on the side. It's just the numbers. So then on the back of my habit tracker, I have like another thing too. It's like a graph. So from one to six going up, it's like how many habits I have. And then from one to... 31 is how many days in a month and it's like a graph now i can see like results like okay i have a huge dip here why i did really good on these days what was the difference between these days and this day because i've read a lot of books on habits and consistency and the compound effect and a lot of those books just mention building a habit tracker like every single like a lot of the audio books i've listened to they'd mention habit trackers i'm just like i might as well make one right because if it's helping them, it will help me as well. And if it's helping me, it will help you as well. So <clears throat> another thing I want to mention too is when you start out making this is make sure the habits are minimal, right? You don't want to be like, okay, I have to do one hour reading every day when you're just not even a reader. Don't do that. Maybe put read one page and then the next month be like read five pages. Next month, read 30 pages. Just go up consistently. Don't don't be like, okay, yeah, like I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. every single day. If you're not used to waking up at 5 a.m. every single day, then why are you doing it? Start small and work your way up. Because it's not, it's not about, because like what the mistake I made was I would put things down that I knew I couldn't complete. I would just, and then I would just have read and I'd just be like, ah, oh, come on. And then I'd just get like discouraged and I wouldn't feel motivated the next day to do it again. And another mistake I made while making this is putting the bad habits on here. Like I put no corn, like no fap on there. And that was a complete mistake, right? Honestly, no, no, for, for no fap, I think it's a really good thing that you track it in the beginning if you're doing it a lot. But once you're down to like single digits a month, it's like you kind of just forget about it. Like I, I kind of forgot forgot about no fap. Like I, I, I would rarely do it nowadays. What I wouldn't do is put bad habits on here, on there. Like I wouldn't do, okay, no phone or no social media, no Instagram, because what you're going to do is you're going to look at your habit tracker all day and then you gonna be like, okay, no social media. And then you'd be worried about yourself. You'd be like, okay, like, cause you can't mark it off until the day is done or the next day. So you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, damn, like, I hope I don't, I hope I don't go on my phone and go on Instagram. It's like there's different ways to get rid of social media, but like, for example, bad habits, I wouldn't really put in the habit tracker. Just put good habits because it's all about the wins. It's all about the small wins that you get. Start off small. When you first make your habit tracker, only put three to four habits. Don't put like six or eight. Like the previous month before this, I put like eight. I put like eight habits and I just like, it was, it was a shit show pretty much. It was a, cause like I was like so worried about doing like all these things in it didn't really go well, but, but yeah, that's how you make your habit tracker. What I'm going to do for you, if you are struggling with your habit tracker or you're struggling with being consistent or you're unmotivated in the link in the description, I'm going to have a Calendly link. You can sign up for free, right? A call with me for 30 minutes during the week. It's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We can hop on a call together for 30 minutes if you want. And we can talk about the habit tracker. talk about being consistent. I can help you get it going or anything and with that i hope you've started building your habit tracker now and continue your journey and keep moving forward